I am a medical oncologist who looks uh, after patients with lung cancer or thoracic malignancies. I also recently became the medical director of the Clinical Cancer Center. So if you have a problem with the building, you come to me. A chemotherapy is the use of medication to kill cancer cells. Now, generally speaking, by and large, these are intravenous drugs. Uh, they get administered in cycles. Although there are some oral chemotherapies that can obviously be taken by mouth and also do the same thing. Uh, it should be pointed out that these drugs kill cells that grow quickly. So while it can kill cancer cells, it can also kill some normal cells that grow quickly, and that's where the reputation for the side effects come. So hair loss, for example, can be a side effect of some chemotherapy because the hair follicles grow quickly. The cells that line the mouth uh, and the gastrointestinal tract also grow quickly, so loss of taste. Everybody's experience is very different with chemotherapy and you can't predict what they are going to experience. In general, the first week of chemotherapy is the hardest week. Uh, that's when you are tired, uh, maybe nauseous, maybe constipated. We've gotten drugs to counteract all this. Second week they feel a bit better, third week they feel the best, and then do it again. And that's kind of like the cycle. From my field, lung cancer is divided into two main categories. Small cell, which presents about 20% of lung cancers and is becoming a less common cancer, and the non-small cell variety, which is subdivided into four different categories. So in the field of adenocarcinoma, which is, again, the commonest type of non-small cell lung cancer, let's say you have a patient who comes to see you with what's called stage four disease. That means the cancer spread beyond the origin, which is beyond the lung. So the treatment for that patient is going to be some medication, some drug. It's going to travel throughout the whole body and kill these cancer cells that are growing quickly, right? So now the oncologist then is faced with a decision. Am I going to pick a chemotherapy drug, an intravenous medication, or am I going to pick a targeted drug, which by and large are oral medications, right? To give you a real life example, uh, a patient of mine who had lung cancer, who has lung cancer, stage four, and I gave her chemotherapy and it didn't respond. Okay, so now I'm faced with what, what am I gonna give her next? The technology has, has spread so much now that we can now measure a lot of different mutations in the cancer. So I measured her mutations and she ends up having a very rare mutation that is present in breast cancer, but it's present in her lung cancer. So now I can treat her with a breast cancer drug. So when I see a patient the first time, for me, the first question is, what is the cell type? Right? And if it's an adenocarcinoma, then I have a process to go through. I need to analyze the tumor cells for the presence of these targetable mutations. If your patient can wait for that testing to come through, and if they have a target, then you treat them with an oral drug to inhibit the target. If you can't wait, the patient is too sick or doesn't want to wait, then you give chemotherapy. And this concept was actually uh, shown to be effective in a large trial that looked at patients with lung cancer where half of them got chemotherapy, half of them got an oral targeted drug. And if you had the mutation specific for this drug, you did better. If you didn't, you did better with chemotherapy, right? So that's kind of the thinking of the decision process. I was invited to sit around a round table with uh, another bunch of medical oncologists and the moderator asked a question and he said, what is your expectation when a patient with stage four lung cancer walks in your office? Without fail, around the table, the answer was, well, I wanna treat them, I wanna see if I can diminish their symptoms, I wanna improve their quality of life. So the guy turns around to everyone and he said, don't you ever think you want to cure the patient? Because I guarantee you that's what the patient wants, right? So I can tell you that this kind of changed how I think, uh, okay? Now, I'm not 
naive enough to say I'm going to cure patients, but but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. You know, when I see a patient now, I say to myself, well, what's the best way I can get to that point? And if I don't get to that point, how can I make the journey better? My, my dad died from cancer, and um, I can tell you he had a horrible journey. Horrible journey, right? He died in a room by himself with a doctor. When he came into round, the doctor would, would stand in the corner and not walk in the room. So I thought to myself, I'm going I'm to do this a little bit better. And so I think now part of the expectation is how is the journey going to be? And you know, believe it or not, that's not about medicine. It's not about drugs. It's about how you handle a patient with respect to what they do and what they feel. You have to be able to impart some hope, but in the meantime, it's a bit of reality.